Hello, my name is Kristen Crawford, and this is my final oral presentation for HSV 4200. In this oral presentation, I will be talking about the path I took getting to my cl clinical appraisal. I will start by discussing my area of interest. I will then go on to talk about the PCOTS grid that I filled out, then to my clinical question, then to the three articles that I found, and finally, I will talk about my clinical appraisal. First off, let's start with discussing my area of interest. I wanted my clinical question to ideally incorporate occupational therapists and concussions involving athletes. For me, these two are a big interest because one involves what I would like to be someday and the other has actually happened to me. Right now, I am going to graduate with my bachelor's degree in interdisciplinary health services with minors in psychology and holistic health. After this, I would like to go on to get my, math, my master's degree in occupational therapy. I would like to work in a rehabilitation clinic outpatient with children. My interest in concussions in athletes stems from a concussion I sustained a year and a half ago while playing in a soccer game. In the soccer game, I got my head slammed against a pole and I spent several months in occupational therapy and speech therapy trying to get myself back into college. With my areas of interest in mind, I moved on to filling out my PCOT grid. The P stands for patient, population, or problem. In defining my key concepts for P, I said, in athletes who sustain a concussion. For step two of P, we had to identify related words using MESH. So for this, I found brain concussion, cortis, and post-concussion syndrome. The I stands for intervention and issue. In defining my key concepts for I, I said, what rehabilitative treatments should therapists use? For step two of I, I found occupational therapy, neurological rehabilitation, and treatment outcomes. The C stands for comparison, intervention, In defining my key concepts for C, I said, are traditional rehabilitative treatments more effective than holistic treatments? For step two of C, I found holistic health and integrative medicine. The O stands for the outcome you would like to measure or achieve. In defining my key concepts for O, I said, identify what teachers and therapists can do to help them. The T stands for the time. My key concepts for T, I said, after the athlete has sustained a concussion and during therapy. The S stands for setting. In defining my key concepts for S, I said, at school and where the occupational therapy is being done. After looking at each section, I came to the clinical question of, after an athlete has sustained a concussion, should occupational therapists use a more traditional rehabilitation treatment or a holistic treatment when getting athletes back into a school setting. Now I'm gonna talk about the three articles that I had found for the article retrieval assignment. The first article that I found was called Multidisciplinary Outpa Outpatient Treatments in Patients with Mild Traumatic Brain Injury, a Randomized Controlled Intervention Study. This article was published in 2017, so it's a more recent article. Um, I found that this article was a randomized control trial because the article tells us that it is this type of trial right away in the title, and they split the two they split into two groups and one is a controlled group, but the other is not. So that's what makes it a more randomized controlled study. One way that I found this article to relate to my research question is that this specific article doing a trial on people who have, has, who have sustained a brain injury um, and they are looking into ways to help better treat the patients after they sustain a head injury. The second way that that specific article 
related to my research question is that the article shows us just how much outpatient therapy can help someone with a brain injury instead of just seeing a primary doctor and, let's say, checkups from time to time. The second article that I found was called Returning to School Following a Sports-Related Concussion. This article was published in 2016. I found the study to design for this article to be um, consensus-based. I said this because in the abstract it talks about how this particular article did not have any evidence-based information in it. Um, I felt that this specific article related to my research question because in the summary it talks about how someone should slowly work their way back to school after a sports-related injury, which is what most people would think you should do. This could be done either with just rest at home, which is what a lot of people do. I know for myself, I did that before I even started therapy. It's what's suggested to everyone, at least a week, staying at home, doing nothing. Um, or you could um, take a more holistic approach, or you could even do this by going to therapy. The third article that I found was called Athletics Trainers Familiarity with a Perception of Academic Accommodations in Secondary School Athletes After Sports-Related Concussion. This article was published in 2015 and I found it to be a cross-sectional study. This was a cross-sectional study because the article mentions that it is a cross-sectional study right in it. Um, this article related to my research question because it has done research on athletic trainers within secondary schools who know about the return to learn and cognitive rest management after a head injury in a school sport. In my research question, I am focusing on students returning to school and how they are doing this. This article also relates to my research question because it has the sports aspect of the article to it. I am focusing on sports injuries, so it is important to me that my articles are about sports-related topics. To go along with everything, I found a little pie chart that probably is not the clearest because there's no color in it, but... It breaks up different sports and how the concussions happen. This big area right in here um, is the group that sustains the most concussion in the sports, and that is actually men's football. Even with the helmets that they wear, they still sustain the most amount of concussions out of any other sport. The second leading um, sport that has concussions is women's soccer. Um, the third one happens to be women's basketball. I personally don't know how people in basketball get concussions because I don't really follow basketball that much, but I can see how football and soccer players can get concussions very easily. Finally, I'm going to talk about my clinical appraisal assignment. Um, for that assignment, I decided to go with the article on athletic trainers' familiarity with um, perceptions of academic accommodations in secondary school athletes and sports-related concussions. For this assignment, um, I found that I was going to use Appendix F, which was the quantitative study, because there were a little bit of numbers, but not so much, but I just felt that it was the best choice. And when looking through all of the appendixes, um, I found the article to be quantitative, so I figured this would fit best for it. Um, after going through all of the questions within the appendix and then writing out the reasons why I said yes and no to each one, I actually found this um, research article to be very helpful to me. Um, it involves the athletic trainers within high schools and how they respond to concussions within their school systems, basically. Um, they followed a more return to learn 
approach I felt within this study. They wanted their the kids to obviously rest for a little bit of time, but not for too long because they wanted them to be able to get into back into school quickly. I know for myself, I probably took a little bit more of a rest time than I should have because I am still getting back to trying to get back into school and being able to sit into a classroom for as long as I should be able to and focus. But I feel that the return to learn is probably the best way. You take a little bit of time of rest, but then they also keep in mind academic accommodations. The academic accommodations could range from anywhere from having more time to take a test to having more time on homework to getting your notes right from the teacher. That way you, just in case you miss something that they said, you can obviously still have all that information and not feel left behind because of your injury. I think that that study was very good and that's why I chose it for my critical appraisal because I felt that it fit best for my research question that I found. Thank you for listening and I really enjoyed taking your class.